Hey everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. This was one of these days that we almost decided not to do this because a couple of us are buggered up in here. It's been a rough time and we decided to go ahead and do this. So there's a bunch of frowns around this table. We will try to get the frowns turned upside down to smiles and to try to get with you guys. And we hope that you are good. Let's begin in prayer. First of Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come before you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your ways. Father, we are simple servants of you. Father, we are privileged to have this path forward. We are privileged to be able to hear of this Torah, the greatest thing ever, when the greatest thing is your son. Father, thank you so much for this, Ecclesia. And Father, please bless those who listen to this now and those who listen to this in the future. And we ask this all in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. All right, Mr. Colt, um, what is our, uh, I'm getting scratched here. Eli, can you please take care of the dog, please? Okay, um, what's going on, Mr. Colt? How's the chat room, and um, how, how are you guys out there? How's okay. everyone? We have a few people in here. We have our family, so we have the Grand. We have Brother Glenn, Emissary Belheem, Judith, Dreg, um, Lisa, Bobby Z, Zachary Z, Rhiannon, and Damon. Wow. Hi, everybody. Thank you very, very much. Hi and how shouts to everybody out there. Uh, Bobby Z, much love, brother. Thank you to, for the help you have been giving to us on um, this editing. Um, Bobby Bobby Z um, is, has been, done a tremendous job. We are actually reading out of James, the book of James. And he, that is the first book that someone outside of our family has taken through the process and gotten it all cleaned up. And got it to the point where we can read it and so we were enjoying the fruits of 
Um, Bobby Z's labor, and we really, really appreciate that. And for anybody now or in the future that wants to be part of a, what we call the open source book project, we are taking from the original source of the Howie Scriptures and we're bringing the, the manuscript exactly back to perfection. And so it'll be able to be printed off and people can use it for whatever whatever they would like to use it for. Yeah, huge, yeah, huge shout to Bobby Z. Big, big, big shout to Bobby Z, everybody. And hi to a new person that we haven't seen, Don T. Johnson. Don T. Johnson, yeah. Um, yeah, much love to you, family out there. And I just saw Bobby Z was talking, Revelation's almost done. Yeah, as soon as we get done with James, which will be next week, um, we're going to jump, ho hopefully Bobby has this done, we're going to jump right into the Revelations. And we are those people you don't want to listen to as far as prophecy goes because we won't have any. Um, we, we just, we read this stuff and we, we can ponder it and we can ponder it all with you guys. But as far as those guys are like, well, this is going to happen or this is going to happen, that's not us. So we're, we're super excited to read through Revelations. And again, thanks to Bobby Z and anyone in the future um, for for doing this stuff. It is, it is awesome and it will make a difference. Maybe not even in our lifetime. Maybe it'll be something we don't even know. Maybe this will be a huge project and people will pick this up and everybody will have a copy of this and, and you never know where good things like that will happen. So all right, let us get into this. Um, first of all, let us read our Shema. For those who do not know who Yashrael is, Yashrael could very well be you if you choose to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. And it is one of these awesome things, the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator have been not forgotten, but it has been hidden from all of us. And we have grown up in religions where we don't know that the law, statutes, and commands are the greatest thing that we can have, and that we, we, we totally neg neglect them because we've been taught this in different various religions. And so when we're talking about this, when we're reading the Shema, this is actually a, a call home to you, right? This is a call to you if you want to be a child of the Most High. Here it goes. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one, and you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And, they sh and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes, and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and upon your gates. Okay, um, thoughts, anyone? Some frowning boys? Got anything here? Let's um, turn these frowns upside down. really. I mean, we talk about it every week. It's just, it's the call for us. If you are Yashrael, that is what we're supposed to do, is to keep the laws, the commands upon our hearts, upon our mind, even put it on our doorposts. We have a thing called mezuzahs. That's how we put it on our doorposts. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, let us get into what we do every week as well. And for those who do not know, um, these laws, statutes, and commands, where they start off with simple things like be fruitful, these are for all of us. And we read this every Shabbat. And as we read this on Shabbat, um, it, is, um, it is what we, we live by. And it is what our family lives by. And um, it, it is uh, something very amazing. So if you guys have never heard the law, statutes, and commandments of our Creator before, um, this is them. You like me, please pet the dog? Okay, first one, number one. I'm sorry, we'll have another drum roll. Another drum roll? We need a drum roll? <laughs> drum roll! That's only with one hand, though. I can only do it with one hand. My other one is mangled meat because my dogs, I got 15 or 16 bites in my left arm. I'm shot. So nothing I can do on the drum roll. So hopefully that was good. All right, guys. Let's go through these real quick. We have Julia kids popped in. She, I think, is Portuguese. Hi, Julia. Yeah. So I don't know if she... I don't know if you can understand us, but hello. I think I believe she says she doesn't speak English, but she feels good here. Ah, uh, much love to you. Hey, we, we appreciate you here. Much love. I hope you're able to understand this stuff. Um, these are the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. Everybody who calls him God, let us begin and let us read these. And if anybody in the chat room has any kind of questions at all, um, please put them in there. We are here to discuss them. And even though we kind of run through these fast, um, they, we probably shouldn't. But if you guys have any questions at all, let us, um, let us get rolling. Okay, here we go. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have you been over the fish, fowl, and every living creature? The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenants, laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, whoever has that one, whoever gets that every single week, somebody should break into that and explain it. So that's you, Jade. 
Why, why is there 53 different commandments? Why are there... Uh, because it's the command Moshe repeats, the command he wants to follow the most. He made a point here to say it the most times in his Torah, to follow his commands because he wants to remember his commands for all generations. Yeah, o over 53 times he told us that we need to obey the laws, statutes, and commands. So maybe it's uh, uh, you know something we should be doing. Okay, let us go. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the uh, commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and the Abram. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make any graven image. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to not. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from a rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yeah, who is lost for criminals? Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat, do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false reports. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. And give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use anointing oil on a normal person. Do not make or use perfume on a normal person. Do, do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman for uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not be. Do not lie or be a liar. Or I actually missed one, didn't I? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with the taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not, def or do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your others. Have correct ways and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits. Shavuot, the Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Teruah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemi Atzeret. If you blaspheme in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you've trespassed against. The Torah of being an Azir. Wear is easy on the four corners of your garments. The laws of whoever touches a corpse. Follow the follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. The Torah of keeping your oath. To Yahuwah. Do not add or take away to the word. Guard yeah. your soul. Sorry. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the frontless between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol. As the of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Every time of the year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. Prophet test Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first trial is to get double portions. 
If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear it pertains to a man, nor a man wear it pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Laws of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was the pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. All right, so for everybody that's out there, those are the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. And this is what a lot of people are like, well, those, those are nailed to the cross. And when you look at them, there isn't a single command in here that you should ever nail to anything. These are commands that are very, very good, and they're very, very good for all time. And it is a blessing once you find them, and it will change your life forever. And a lot of people just don't do that. All right, so are you guys ready to rock them? Mm -hmm. What what'd you got? I think she asked if we're explaining about them or not. Explaining about what? The, the command, each command. I think she's talking about the Sabbath. She's talking about the Sabbath? The Sabbath. The Sabbath. Can she understand Spanish? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You can ask uh, talk, talk to her real quick in Spanish. Uh, hola, uh, Julia Kids. Habla español. Entiende español. Okay. So as she's talking on this, let's just continue on over here. Let's just find out um, what she needs on that because we would love to help her out as well. Okay. Eli, are you ready? So does anyone remember what happened in chapter 25 of um, this at all? Yeah, you see, um, Abraham basically his generation continued on. We had Isaac and Rebecca, yeah. who got married. They had their kids, and they we went through the entire lineage of how Abraham had another wife, and more kids, and then we got to the point where uh, the boys were born, Jacob and Esau, and basically Esau was a bad person. He was not a person following the commands, but uh, you know, it was uh, Isaac that loved him more. Right. And then basically he sold his birthright for a pot of stew after killing Nimrod. Right. Okay, so let us begin, and we will um, get back with the chat here after this. This is Genesis 26, verse 1. And at the top, for those who do not know what the Targums is, the Targums is another translation. And there was a, a paper that I was going to bring out because we are keeping a list of differences between scriptures and Targums. And there are quite a few of different things that are different between scriptures, what we consider scriptures, which we call Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and then outside stuff, which could very well potentially be the Targums. And one of those things was that they said uh, this king of Og was riding the ship Noah's Ark um, during the storm. That was one of the things that we were like, hmm, yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. None of this made any sense. But then there was another thing. What was I telling you about this morning, Nicole? It was in Jasher that I found. Um, who, what was it about, guys? Uh, the Melchizedek priest. Shem. Oh, the Mel that's right. The Melchizedek priesthood, and that it was Shem, and that and it was there, I guess, for us all the time, because I'm, I'm reading Jasher, and it does say the Melchizedek priest that came to see Abraham was Shem. So um, I thought that was very interesting. So some of these things, we don't know if they're they're right, and but we are keeping a list of them, um, and so maybe we can figure this out. So right, here we go. Genesis 26. And there was a scarcity of food in the land, Besides the first scarcity of food, which was in the days of Abram, and Yitzhak went to Ablamak, sovereign of the Pelishites in Gerar. And Yahuwah appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Mizraim. Live in the land which I command you. Sojourn in this land, and I shall be with you and Barak you. For I give all these lands to you and your seed, and I shall establish the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. And I shall increase your seed like the stars of the Shimei, and I shall give all these lands to your seed, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be Baruch. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and guarded my charge, my commands, my laws, and my Torah. And Yitzhak dwelt in Gerar. Okay, so there's, this is something we should talk about, right? Prior to our having a Messiah, Prior to us having that salvation that is in Yahushua, there was no other way to go forward except in obedience. 
There was no other way. We didn't have a Messiah at that time. And Abraham, who was a friend of our creator and who is something that we would want to be a friend of our creator, right? Wouldn't that be the best thing ever to be called a friend of our creator? Yeah. Well, he, he, he was taken care of by Yah. And it wasn't because of anything other than, number one, he, it says, his voice and guarded my charge, my commands, my laws, and my Torah. So what is this saying about what we need to do? How, how, is, how is salvation achieved if salvation was achieved by Abraham back in these days like this? What is, what is it? How can we say what Revelation 14, 12 is all about for people who don't understand this? Well, because, we talked about the other day in James how he said that his righteousness was counted unto him as his belief, so that was his faith by his obeying. And this whole thing about Isaac, how he's blessed because his father is the exact same as David and Solomon. Yeah, and we live in a world where it seems like nobody wants to be obedient. Like it is a bad thing to be obedient to our creator or like you are some sort of a slave or something of the sort. And that's how people feel that when you're keeping the, oh, Jason, we don't want to keep these laws, statutes, and commands. Oh, that's for the old people, right? There's a million excuses not to do this. But if we simply read in Genesis... There were no, there wasn't a Messiah back then. We did not have Messiah Yahushua on on the plane that he was able to um, become that Melchizedek priest for us. And so Abraham had it by this, by keeping his obedience. All right, guys, and this is the wind. We're super sorry about the wind. It, it's picked up and things are blowing all over the place. So this sounds like we're in a uh, the ocean. Is where everybody fought last time. Yeah, ocean or a hurricane. That's where we're at. Okay, now we're heading back up to the top, guys. And this is the Targums, and this is where we get the extra stuff that we're trying to figure out if it's if it's scriptures or not. And there was a mighty famine in the land of Canaan, beside the former famine which had been in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistine, at Gerar. It had been in Isaac's heart to go down to Mizraim. But Yahuwah appeared to him and said, Go not down to Mizraim. Dwell in the land as I have told thee. Sojourn in the land, and my word shall be for thy help. Will I give all these lands? And I will establish the covenant which I have covenanted with Abraham thy father. And I will multiply thy sons as the stars of the heavens and will give to thy sons all these lands. And through thy sons shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. On account of that, Abraham obeyed my word and kept the keeping of my word, my statutes, my covenants, and my laws. And Ishak dwelt in Gerar. Okay. So I, I like I like this one how it says um, it's a little bit different. What is what is, when he says Torah, um, brother Glenn or emissary of Elohim? When it says Torah right here, is this is this a Torah or what exactly is that? Do you guys have another translation? Anyone? Uh, no, I don't think I think it says my commandments because it goes. Yeah, I think it's like Torah. It must yeah, be. I think that's commandments or uh, teachings. Well, he said my commands, my laws, and my Torah. It must uh, be Torah. Must be well. It must be my commands, though. Laws would be Torah as well. I think it's teachings. I'm pretty sure Torah means teachings. Teachings. All right. We'll wait for somebody up there who is a little more educated than us. Um, okay. Let's continue on. It's so, just emissary says it's just plural. Plural for all the commands for everything. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Okay. Seven. And when the men of the place asked about his wife, he said, "She is my sister," for he was afraid to say, "She is my wife," lest the men of the place should kill me for Ribka because she is good looking. And it came to be when he had been there a long time that Ablamax, sovereign of the Pelashites, looked through a window and he watched and saw Yitchak playing with Ribka, his wife. So Ablamax called Yitchak and said, see, truly, she is your wife. So how can you say she is my sister? And Yitchak said to him, because I said, lest I die on account of her. Okay. So here's the difference between Abraham. And, I guess I'll ask you guys, what is the difference between Abraham and Yitchak? Um, um, Abraham was kind of telling the truth here. I just completely lied. Yeah, this is a lie. This is a lie. lie. But I mean, <laughs> I think this is the same guy. I think this is the like, same. I'm like, I'm like smarter this time. He's ready this time around for these these people. Yeah, he's they've had they had some issues. Yeah, definitely because of that. Okay, ten. He's figuring out. He's watching now. He's got it figured out. Yep. Ten. And Abelmex said, "What is this you have done to us? One of the people have almost had almost lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt on us." So obviously there was like something, some other yeah, stories. Yeah, sure. There's more curses, like there's a crazy thing. I think it was leprosy broke out or boils broke out on these people. Yeah, yeah. And I was just reading in Jasher, um, same same kind of thing, right? Um, Yah always curses those who are trying to touch 
<laughs> his anointed, his people. Okay. I, mean, I mean, I think it's the same guy. I'm pretty sure the same Abimelech is the one that Abraham lied to as well. Yeah. So, I mean, or it could th- be like the Abimelech son that could just like keep the same name. I don't know. It's like like, the, like this place just keeps getting cursed because they can't because Abraham still can't stop lying. <laughs> okay, eleven. And Abimelech commanded all his people, saying, "He who touches this man or his wife shall certainly be put to death." And Yitzhak sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and Yahuwah blessed him. All right, what do you guys make of a hundredfold? I mean, um, I don't know what that is. So if we take one piece of kernel of corn and you're ending up with like a hundredfold, it would be it would be enormous amount. If you get a hundred per one, no, no, no matter what you're farming, if you get a hundred to one, that rocks. That's really really super good. Even with a a piece of wheat, like if you took a piece of wheat and you dropped it in the ground, you're not going to get a hundred pieces of, of wheat. You'll get one piece of wheat that has the head. You may get I don't know thirty or forty pieces of it, but you're not going to get a hundred. Hundredfold. That is a lot. So Yah completely blessed him, and Yah owns the land. He built the land, and he could certainly make 500 pound watermelons come out of the ground if he so chose. Okay, 13. And the man grew great and went forward until he became very great. And he came to have possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great body of servants, and the Pelishites envied him. And the Pelishites had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, and filled them with dirt. All right, so what do you guys make of this, the whole thing? Now, um, we've, I don't know why they do that. It's like water, or like, I mean, it, it at least take the well for yourself instead of like stopping the well. We've dug three separate wells. We have, what, one well that's like 30, 40 feet, somewhere yeah, down there? 30 feet, 25, and, we, and I think uh, 18. So what do you guys make of it? The one well that we had, the very last rock we had to pull out of that, the rock was like probably like 600 pounds. It took like literally 20 guys in this old rigged system were literally out in the middle of a jungle pulling a 600 pound rock out of a hand dug well what do you guys make of this um we were able to get that rock out how come those guys i mean those guys would have had the same kind of resources so if they plugged up the well the hard part about digging a well is is getting down that is the hard thing if people go and put stuff in the well it's going to be easier to dig the well out after somebody has refilled it, especially where you're not doing fresh stuff. That's my, that's my take on it. Um, why didn't they go and um, fix these wells instead of um, any thoughts on this? I have no idea. And, and what was the purpose of this? These guys, I obviously, think, they were ticked off. They're just angry maybe because maybe they're cursing that they, they brought upon land or something, or maybe they just didn't want to see like Isaac being blessed. I don't know. And it, it's, it's weird they didn't want to share the wells. And it, I guess it depends on how much water they had. How much water would actually be in these wells, but I don't know. All right, 16. You got anything? Okay. And Abimelech said to Yitchek, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. I got to go to the top? Yep. Okay, thanks, guys. I just wanted to read the answers. Okay. All right, so I'm heading back up to the top. Um, where are we at here? And, and the man. And the man. Okay. And the man of the place inquired concerning his wife, and he said, she is my sister. For he reasoned in his heart, lest the men of this play of the play should kill me for Rivka because she was of a beautiful appearance. And it was when days had increased to him in abiding there, that Abimelech, the king of the Philistine, looked from a window and beheld, and Ishak was disporting with Ribka, his wife. So I think the word, we don't even have to be educated. I think disporting would be like sporting with his wife, like um, playing around, something of the sort, you know, joking around how men and women do. Okay, and then the other, the other um, translation says, and he looked. So I don't know what good that did, but and Abimelech called Ishak and said, "Nevertheless, she is thy wife. And why hast thou said she is my sister?" And Ishak answered him, "Because I said in my heart, lest they kill me on her account." And Abimelech said, "Why hast thou done this to us? It might have been that the king, who is the principal of the people, had lain with thy wife, and thou wouldst have brought guilt upon us." And the Jerusalem translation says, "And Abimelech said to him, What is this that thou hast done to us?" Very possibly might one of the young men have lain with thy wife, and there would have been great guilt brought upon us. And Abimelech instructed all the people, whoever shall go near to injure this man or his wife shall verily be put to death. And Ishak sowed unto righteousness in that land, and found in that year a hundred for one, according to his measure. And Yahuwah blessed him, and the man increased, and went forward increasing until it was very great. And he had flocks of sheep and herds of cattle and great cultivation. And the Philistine envied him. And all the wells which the servants of his father had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistine stopped up and filled with earth. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a rude thing to do, honestly. Um, 
I don't know why they would do that. That would be very irritating. Yeah, that would definitely irritate you after doing that up. And who knows how far those wells are? I mean, they, they, we have water everywhere here. So at 35 feet is, I you know, some place, I guess, in California, you go four or 500 feet and you still can't get water or something of the sort. Here, we just dig down and eventually there's water and, and away it goes. So that, who knows what, you know, they may have had like 200 foot wells or something. I, I guess that would, that would be problem. Emissary okay. Elohim says they were not trying to let them take their inheritance. Mm. They didn't want their stuff to go, so they stopped at the wells to keep these people out. And that would be one thing. If they didn't want the water and they stopped at the wells and there's no place to feed your animals, then you would have to go somewhere else. You absolutely must have water for your animals. All right, Eli, where am I at here? Yeah, All right. Hold on, Father Glenn. Glenn says, no water, no survival. An easy way to drive them out of the land. Yeah, a- absolutely. Okay, and Ablamax says to Ishak, Go from us, for thou art stronger than we, in riches very much. That's it? That's it. All right, let's go to the next one. 17, we're at the bottom on the ex scriptures. So Yitshak went from there and pitched his tent in Wadi Gerar and dwelt there. And Yitshak dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Pelashites had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. And he called them by the names which his father had called them. Now, do you think... Um, you think uh, Yitchak dug these wells himself, or he had his people dig these wells? You think they actually lowered him down in the well? I don't know if Isaac would have done it. Yeah, for those who have never dug a well, um, and we had never dug a well until we came to South America, you just, we did it like, what, about a three-foot hole? You do about a three-foot hole, and nothing, you can go down, and um, you just start digging down. And you start digging down, and you just keep going. And pretty soon, you start lowering uh, ropes down there with buckets, and pretty soon you have... You know, you start lowering the kids down and lowering them up, and pretty soon you have to start putting hard hats on the kids because you don't want to knock a rock under their skulls and have have to fish them out of the bottom of, of the, the well as well. Okay, so here we go. Um, and, 19. And 19. But when Yitzhak's servants dug in the wadi and found a well of running water there, the herdsmen of Gerar strove with which Yitzhak's herdsmen, saying, the water is ours. And he called the name of the well Eset because they strove with him. So there's another well. So these guys are getting their animals. Are, they're having a tough time uh, watering their animals. And they dug another well. And they strove over that one too. And he called its name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not strive over it. And he called its name Rehoboth and said, For now Yahuwah has made room for us and we shall bear fruit in the land. So that's, I guess that's something else as well that we have a little bit of well experiences is we have tried to attempt to dig more wells. But not every well, you can't go down. Sometimes you go down like five or six feet and it becomes solid rock. Or and, and, I mean, you sit there. I literally sat for three weeks straight and I thought I was going to break through the solid rock with a pick with a pry bar. And I sat and chiseled chunks of rock out. Chunk, I, I made it down like one or two feet. Finally, I'm like, this isn't the well for us. We should move on to better places. And so um, when these guys are digging wells, this is, this is probably a big thing, especially depending on how far down it goes. And water is, is obviously the, you know, the, the, the source of life. We'd be done without it. All right. Where are we at, Eli? We're on 23. 23. All right. Don't fall asleep on me, Eli. Okay. And from there, he went up to Be'er Sheba. And Yahuwah appeared to him the same night and said, I am the Elohim of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you and shall baruch you and increase your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. What do you guys think that looked like? He said the same down. Elohim came down and, and, and saw him. Do you think, what was it, a blinding light? You think, what, do you, what um, I don't was it a voice he, in the sky? I don't think he would have been able to see Yahuwah, but um, it might have been like a light or something for him, or maybe it was like just in a dream he heard a voice. A dream and a voice, maybe. All right. And 25. And he built an altar there and called in the name of Yahuwah. And he pitched his tent there, and the servants of Yitchak dug a well there. And these guys ought to be good at really digging wells. And once you guys start digging wells, it, it becomes like um, it's, you almost get addicted to it. You just really like digging wells. We, had a, we, we, were, doing, we were going for a lot of wells for a while. <laughs> we ended up with three. Okay. And Ablamak came to him in Gerar with Ahuza, one of his friends, and Pickle, the commander of his army. And Yitchak said to them, Why have you come to me, seeing you have hated me and have sent me away from you? But they said, we have clearly seen that Yahuwah is with you. And we said, please, let there be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you. That you do no evil to us, as we have not touched you, and as we have done this only good toward you, and have sent you away in peace. You are now Baruch by Yahuwah. Okay, uh, he didn't say, yeah, 
they, you know, this is this is a little bit after the fact, right? So they, they they've already fought these guys for their water a while, right? And and Jake even or uh, Isaac, um, but he he's clearly he clearly is wondering about this, right? He he wonders, you've sent me away. Why are you coming to me now? What do you think? Why do you think all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they came to him and wanted him to make some sort of an oath or, or some to some kind of peace? I'm, I'm assuming they're like have a famine or something terrible has happened to them in their life. Wondering if they make peace with this guy that Yahoo will not curse them anymore. It's interesting though. What about all the other wells? Why did anyone want to make peace with him while he's trying to get his animals water? Well, it talks about the well in a minute about uh, what he, he said. What he said about the well. If we keep reading. All right, let's continue. Thirty. Eli, I'm to talk about it. I don't know if you read uh, 30 mm -hmm. minutes. 30. Okay. And he made a feast, and they ate and drank. All right, so he forgave him. Let's continue on. Now, at the top, we're back into the Targums. Glenn says it's called fear. Fear? Which oh, fear? What's called fear? I don't know. The, uh... <laughs> probably how I've been... How I've oh, been game yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. And, I mean, y'all could have put some dreams in their heads or something. You know, you never know what y'all's doing to folks. Okay. And Ishak went thence and sojourned in the Vale of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which the servants of his father had digged in the days of Abraham his father, and which the Philistine had stopped after Abraham was dead. And he called them by the names his father had called them. And the servants of Ishak digged in the border of the vale, and found there a well of flowing water. And the servants or the shepherds of Gerar contended with Ishak's shepherds, saying, This wa the water is ours. And it was the will of heaven, and it dried. Okay, so there's something else. Something we never ever hear about, right? Um, it didn't say their well ever dried up. This is something we did not get except in the Targums, which it is completely possible for a well to dry up. And when that happens, then you just get back in the hole and you start digging deeper. You just keep going further down. And eventually there, hopefully, will be water. So they took his well and Yahuwah dried it up? Yeah, they took his well and then they, they dried it up and then all of a sudden it became useless. And then, okay. But when they returned to Ishak, it flowed. And he called the name of the well Esek. Contention, because Ethesiku, they had quarreled with him on account of it. I don't even know how to say that word, Ethesiku. I don't even know if that was. Uh, they had quarreled with him on account of it, and they digged another well, and they contended for it also, and it dried, and it did not flow again. And he called the name of it Sitna, accusation. And he removed from thence and digged another well, and for that they did not contend as formerly, and he called the name of it Rav. Chatha, spaciousness. For he said, now hath Yahuwah given us space to spread us abroad in the land. All right. Any, any, any questions, anything going on at all, Mystical? No. Okay. Let's continue on. And he went up from thence unto Beersheba. And Yahuwah appeared to him that night and said, I am the Elohim of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for my word is for thy help, and I will bless thee and multiply thy sons for righteousness sake of Abraham, my servant. And he built there an altar and prayed in the name of Yahuwah. And he spread his tabernacle there. And the servants of Ishak digged there a well. And when Ishak went forth from Gerar, the wells dried up and the trees made no fruit. And they felt that it was because they had driven him away. All these things had been fallen them. Okay, now we get our answers. Now we get why these dudes came out. Because every time he left, every time they went and they stole a well from him, the thing dried up. And so obviously Yah is... Um, teaching them a little bit of a lesson, a little res lesson in respect. Okay. And Ablamech went to him from Gerar and took his friends to go with him, and Fikil, the chief of his host. And Isaac said to him, them, Why come you to me and that I should pray for you when you have hated me and driven me from you? And they answered, Seeing we have seen that the word of Yahuwah is for thy help and for thy righteousness' sake, all good hath been to us. But when thou wentest forth from our land, the wells dried up, and our trees made no fruit. Then we said, We will cause him to return to us. And now let there be an oath established between us and kindness between us and thee. And we will enter into a covenant with thee, lest thou do us evil. All right. So this is, this is, I, this is why I like the Targums. Even though there are some very questionable things in the Targums that you have to be very scripturally based to uh, get through. Um, this is one of them because we did not know this, right? We don't, we would have to sit here and speculate like we just did all about this. And it actually told us this. And so that's very interesting. All right. Where are we at? Uh, for as much. Yep. For as much as we have not come nigh thee for evil 
as and as we have acted with thee only for good and have indeed sent thee away in peace, thou art not blessed of Yahuwah. So again, I mean, I don't know if they, it sounds like they were spending this whole thing because they, you know, they're, they're, they sent them away in peace. It didn't sound like they were sending them away in peace. Yeah, if, fighting if, the dudes if, well is not. If you have a whole bunch of your servants attacking your servants, um, you know, the, a bunch of people's servants, that's absolutely not peaceful. In fact, they, I mean, they had to go away. Okay. Um, and they arose in the morning, each man with his brother, and he broke off from the bridle of his donkey and gave one part of them for a testimony. And Ishak prayed for them, and they were enlarged. And Ishak accompanied them, and they went from him in peace. All right, so we're heading back down into the other scriptures at the bottom. Yeah, 31. Okay, 31 says below. And they rose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another. And Ishak let them go, and they departed from him in peace. And they probably had good fields for a while after that, right? Yep. And water. And on the same day it came to be that the servants of Ishak came and informed him about the well which they had dug, and said to him, we have found water. So he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Ber Sheba to this day. And when Esau was 40 years old, he took his wives, Yehudith, the daughter of Be'eri, the Kittite, and Basmath, the daughter of Elion, the Kittite. And they, they were a bitterness of spirit to Yitchak and the Rivka. All right. Why were they a bitterness to his parents? Because they were Canaanites. They didn't love Yahuwah. Yeah, they, did, they, they were outsiders, right? And that's why our creator says, don't go amongst the, the nations. Stick with your own people because when you go uh, with the nations, you're going to start doing what they do. And so that is what they end up doing. All right, what do you got, Mystical? Back to the well digging. Back to the well digging. I love well digging. <laughs> Sorry, Bill, he says a pat on the back. Ain't always fully friendly. Maybe agree to be frenemies. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe for the sake of us all, we'll uh, just hang out. You know, they, they saw stuff, and you know that's the that's the crazy thing about the hand of Yah. Um, you know, even you know back in the day when Esau was t trying to take out his brother um, in the extracurricular books, you don't know anything about this other than when you do read the extracurricular books, you find out that there were angels that um, Esau got completely spooked, and he thought there were hordes of armies and things under his brother's hand. And by the time he actually greeted his brother, he was so scared to death. He was like, hey, brother, how you doing? I love you. Let's come back in peace, right? He did not want a, uh, he didn't want none of that. And so very interesting in the hand of Yah that he does all of this stuff. And um, anyone else have anything here? This is Nicole. Uh, you were back, still more than, I still the top? Yeah, there's still more in the there's top. Oh, the well, I can go right here. Let's we'll go right here. All right. So uh, here it is, and um, yeah, sorry guys. Hold on, this is um, life, and this is like two days after a fight. Everything is kind of on edge, and so we are just trying to stay alive right here and read this with you guys. Sorry guys. All right, um, let's continue. Where are we at right here? Sorry guys. We are on Fort Let's See in the morning. On the end on that day. All right, we just lost all the family. There's only Eli and I left. All the dogs and everyone else is gone. All the people are gone. Okay, we're, so we're right here. Yep. And on that day, the servants of Isaac came and told him concerning the well they had digged, and said to him, "We have found water." And he called it Sheba, the swearing. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. And Esau was the son of forty years, and he took to wife Yehudith, daughter of Beeri, the Kittite, Hittite, Hitta. And, and Basemoth, daughter of Elon, the Kitta, Hitta, and they bowed in strange worship and set themselves to rebel in their evil conduct against Ishak and against Rivka. And the other version of it goes, and they were refractory, swelling in spirit with strange worship and would not receive instruction from Ishak or Rebekah. All right, and that's, that's um, you know, that's what all parents don't want to see is that the um, their kids are going astray and they're, they're you know, when you raise your children up in Torah, when they go against the Torah, it breaks your heart every way, shape, and form, just like it breaks the heart of our Creator. So I guess that's that. Um, anyone else have anything, anything in the chat room, Mr. Cole? Nope. Somebody's going to send you some pictures they took. All right. Send me some pictures. I would appreciate it. Um, I guess that is it, everyone. We're going to sign off here. Sorry for the dog interruption again. Um, we love you all very much. We hope that you guys have a wonderful day, a wonderful Shabbat, and hopefully um, Yah is dwelling with you in all of your stuff. So, guys, we love you very much. Eli, take us away.
All right, everybody, we love you guys very, very much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being with us. We truly, truly love you. May Yahuwah bless you. May he keep you. May his light forever shine upon you. May his grace be with you, and may you forever find his son's ways, and may you ever forever find Yah's ways. Much love, everybody. All right. Shalom. Shalom.